Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the baseball field at Ryanack High School. With Nick Gutierrez, I'm Steven Astis for LMC Varsity Sports. We have a great matchup here for, to start the playoffs between Valhalla and Ryanack. Nick, should be a good matchup today. Yeah, you're right, Steve. It should be a good matchup, and uh, Valhalla is coming into this confident. You know, they have a big, good pitching lineup, and uh, they can go deep there in the pitching. And uh, they're not scared of this Reinach team, and Reinach themselves, they're a pretty good team here, too. Now, Valhalla's been, had an, a bit of an up-and-down season, but they were victorious against Valhalla, against Reinach earlier this season. They won 8-3. to Reinach is coming in as the favorite. They're 14 and 6 on the season. They've got a lot of talent up and down the roster, starting off with their center fielder, Colin Kelly, who will be leading off for the team and going all the way through the batting order, order and of course with their pitcher on the hill. Yeah. Um, it should be an exciting game and honestly, I'm looking for a good game of baseball to come and I think it's going to be a high-scoring game actually. Um, based on the fact that Reinach can hit the ball and I think that they can, you know, get runs in based on how uh, their coach likes to make people steal and um, take the bases, so yeah. So Joe Car Carlucci will be giving the ball to Connor Ligori. He will be on the mound today for Reinach. We'll be back in just a moment with the first pitch here on LMC Varsity Sports. Batting second, center field, Brad Sasso. Batting third, third base, Brian Goodman. Batting fourth, catcher, Greg Palais. Batting fifth, right field, Robert Carbone. And batting sixth, the pitcher, Cameron Flynn. Batting seventh, first base, Patrick Gleason. Batting eighth, the left fielder, Joe Pecora. And batting ninth, playing second base, Justin Renato. Valhalla is coached by Josh Wolfson and assisted by Brian Foley and Matt Pringle. And now the starting lineup for your Panthers from Rhineck. Batting first and playing center field, Colin Kelly. Playing shortstop, batting second, Brian Scott. Batting third, playing catcher, Jax Sheldon. And batting fourth, playing first base, Anthony Michelli. Batting fifth, the starting pitcher, Connor Ligori. Batting sixth, playing third base, Evan Dunn. Batting seventh, playing second base, Michael Colasanti. Batting eighth, playing right field, Matt Galston. And batting ninth, playing left field, Tom Birmingham. And the Panthers are coached by head coach Joe Carlucci, assisted by Nick DeSanto, Kevin McQuaid, and Brian Acavelli. So here we are for the first pitch at Ryanack High School. You can sense the excitement in the air. Good crowd here along the third and first baselines. And the first pitch is low for ball one. Lagori starts off with the first pitch ball, and Val Halle is letting him hear it. Yeah, you got some great energy from the Valhalla players, also from the Rhineck fans. Should be a good game today. Good atmosphere. Second pitch is outside, just off the plate, 2-0. and Going around the infield, we have Evan Dunn at third base. Ooh, and a line drive is stopped by Tom Birmingham. And Gavin Estrella is on with a 2-0 line drive single to left field. That was a great cut there, Steve. Definitely. So back to it. 
It is Brian Scott at shortstop. Evan Dunn at third, as I mentioned. The second baseman is Michael Colasanti. First baseman, Anthony Michelli. Jack Sheldon is behind the plate. We have Tom Birmingham, as we mentioned, in left field. Matt Galistain, Galistain, sorry, in right field. Kyle, Colin Kelly in center. And Connor Liguori, as we said, is towing the rubber, number 44. Pitching for Rynak. Now up to bat is the center fielder, number seven, Brad Sasso. Fouled the first pitch off on a butt, bunt attempt. He squares again, and he offered, so it is 0-2 to Sasso. Gore is really bringing the heat on these pitches. I'm trying to strike him out right here. The pitch is low and inside, and Sheldon thinks about throwing down to first, but Estrella is back in cleanly. One and two count for Ligori. He deals, swing, and a foul ball straight back. He just missed that one, Nick. Staying alive in there. That's all you can ask for if you're Valhalla's coach. Two bunts, both fouled, so that's all you can ask for. Looked like a good cut on that fastball high and over the middle. And the runner is going, Estrella. We'll have to go back. We'll it's have to return, ball. yes, as the ball is fouled off into the third base foul territory. Ligori might want to try to throw to first to keep Estrella honest. Ligori does just that. He looks over and takes his back foot off the rubber. So there is no balk. And the pitch. Fly ball down the left field line, out of play. Remains one and two to Sasso. Sasso's doing everything you want, staying alive. Nice eye on the ball, cutting when he needs to. Ligori has had a solid season on the mound for Rye Neck, leading them to a 14 and six record on the year. And the runner going once again and is fouled straight back. Sasso taking some solid cuts here. Ligori not missing the bat yet. We'll see how that goes as the game wears on. Looks like it's been mostly fastballs here. Possibly a curveball mixed in there. Our angle on that is not as good. Estrella's so gonna wanna move up bases here. He's gonna wanna hit on Sasso. Estrella is not running. But they still, oh, nice play there by Ligori on the toss from Michelli. The runner does advance even though he was not running on the play as the ball was hit too softly for Michelli to think about trying to get the lead runner. So with one away now, there's a runner on second base and coming to the plate is the third baseman, Brian Goodman. Early in the game, but I think Valhalla can be happy, sacrifice that batter for that runner to move up, so. Ball to the batter as Ligori tries to work himself out of an early situation here in the top of the first inning. Pitch high for ball two, two and oh to Goodman. Got some fans behind us wanting a strike there, but a little too oh, high think there. They, I think, Nick, they were probably just saying that for effect and laughs as much as anything. You're right, Steve. As that ball was up at his eyes. And the pitch is a curveball outside. Good job by Sheldon to get his glove on that and keep the runner from advancing. So, uh, 3-0 count to Goodman here. He'll try and keep him off the bases. 
Should expect a fastball right down the middle. And unfortunately, that does not find the zone. So a four pitch walk to Goodman. And he is on first base. Two runners on with one out. And the catcher, Greg Peleus, up to bat. It's very early right now, but this could be dangerous for Reineck. Definitely not on. how you want to start your postseason in the top of the first, Nick. Definitely not. Definitely not, Steve. Hopefully he can keep the ball on the ground here, possibly get a double play as he puts the ball over for strike one. There are a couple of three-year varsity players on the Valhalla roster. Estrella at second base as well as, uh, sorry, at shortstop, as well as Ranautu, the second baseman who's batting ninth in the order today. Line drive right at Paul Asante, and they get the double play to end the inning. Beautiful job by Paul Asante to grab that liner and throw it to Michelli before Goodman can get back. That was a beautiful play. Great job by the uh, second baseman and the first baseman there. Good catching and throwing, but Goodman kind of condemned himself there because he ran a little too far, so he couldn't have enough time to get back. It's always the problem when you have a line drive. The saying when you're coaching in Little League is on the ground you're running, in the air you're looking, and a line drive you freeze. So that will do it for the top of the first inning. We'll be back in just a moment. Batting now in the bottom of the first inning after that dazzling play by Colasante to two Michelli to end the first is Colin Kelly. And Kelly offers at the first pitch a ground ball foul down the third base line, 0-1. It's going to be really interesting here how the Valhalla pitcher comes out and plays this first inning as they do have a deep lineup. So the pitcher is Cameron Flynn on the mound. And he goes with the off-speed pitch in for strike two to Kelly. Nick, you have to imagine that Reineck is going to try and capitalize on the momentum of the energy that Colasanti brought with that line-out, throw-out, double play. As Kelly watches one just off the plate, one and two, Colin Kelly has always had a fantastic eye at the plate, never offering at pitches that he doesn't like. And he saw that one all the way in for a ball. Swing and a ground ball catches a little too much of the top of the ball there and rolls over it for out number one to the first baseman, Patrick Gleason, one away. Key for Reineck here, especially now 0-0 after a good inning, I would say, is that they'd have to outwork the pitcher in the box. Find a way, get hits, clean hits, get people on, try to get a run in or two. Great point, Nick. And then also to add on to that point, it worked the pitch count. And with the high school ru rules being what they are as the ball gets away and Brian Scott, the shortstop, is up to bat with one away, if they can get him to that 85 pitch limit, see just how deep that pitching roster is as we talked about in the pregame. Sorry, correction, that 85 was uh, JV. Varsity, he can go all the way to 105. And that would then, correction, he can go to 125 pitches and would require four days rest. Scott swings at a pitch low and golfs that one foul. They recently implemented the pitch count rules as some coaches. Oh, nice shot by Scott, but a ground ball straight to the shortstop. Excellent and throw. Brian Scott 
just barely misses the opportunity to beat that out as he is racing down the line. Yes, that was a great throw. Put a lot of gas on that was the shortstop Gavin Estrella. So two away and the catcher Jack Sheldon walks to the plate. Valhalla is playing a very tight inning here, very nice. They're not playing no games coming out here in the first inning. Curveball in the dirt and Sheldon offers edit. Strike one. Doesn't go after that one. A second pitch in the dirt from Flynn. Evens the count up. Sheldon will try and get something started. A little two out rally here in the bottom of the first. Time called by the batter. He wants to take a second. Often, Nick, what pitchers will do is differ the amount of time they take to deliver to the plate. Here he's very quick as he didn't really change anything on that. And it is now a one and two count to Sheldon. As I was saying, they try and mix up the amount of time they take and sometimes the batter ends up waiting too long at the plate and loses his comfort and will call for time. Curveball is lined to the right fielder and he waits on that. Bobbles it a little, a little but the lefty gets it in. And Robert Carbone fields the first line drive hit for the Rynak Panthers. Jack Sheldon is on with two outs. Carbone did good damage limitation there, keeping the ball in front of him. Couldn't make the play, but at least letting it stay in front of him. He did well there. Definitely don't want to dive after that, have that go past you, and end up with a runner in scoring position for sure, with Steve. two outs. So he made the safe call. This grass is in great shape here at Ryanak High School. It actually does look a little thick, so the ball may not travel quite as quickly. We saw it slow up there as it reached Carbone. First pitch outside for ball one to Anthony Michelli, the first baseman. And Sheldon is going. The ball was in the dirt. Greg Peleus could not come up with it cleanly. And Sheldon will get credit for the stolen base. That was smart base running by Sheldon there. Poor throw from Flynn as well. He's going to have to clean that up. So it's now a 2-0 count to Michelli with Sheldon now in scoring position. Michelli has had a very good season at the plate for Rynak with several RBIs in just this situation. Batting average, getting a high batting average with running, runners in scoring position is a key stat for success on a baseball team. There he offers it. That one just a little bit late, fouls it down the right field line and out of play. So the count is now two and one. Flynn's gonna wanna close it out here. Starting strong, wanna finish strong here in this inning. We'll see what he has here for Michelli. And Michelli calling for time just like Sheldon did. And now they both set up for the pitch. Swing and a miss, it's in the dirt. So Michelli will run down to first base. But the throw down to first is in time. So that'll do it here. One inning in the books. It is 0-0 as Valhalla will be coming to the plate in the top of the second. Second inning now getting started. Robert Carbone, that right fielder who fielded Sheldon's line drive, is at the plate. Lefty thrower, lefty batter. So he will have a slight advantage according to traditional pitcher batter matchup as the curveball will be less effective to Carbone. So Liguri goes to the fastball for strike one. 
swing and a miss. Big swing at the fastball from Ligori. And it is an 0-2 count to the number five hitter. The pitch is low and inside and gets away from Sheldon. It's a wild pitch there from Ligori. Uh, definitely, but doesn't count in the books as wild, luckily, as no base runners were on base to advance. But yes, he was, uh, he lost that one low and inside. Oh, and he gets him with a nasty curveball as Carbone offered at it and was way out in front. It was a beautiful job there by Ligori. Quick in and out from the batter. This is going to want to do that two more times to close this inning out. First strikeout of the day for either side. Ligori now dealing once again from the windup. And the batter this time is the pitcher, Cameron Flynn. He takes ball one. This Rynek team has had its ups and downs throughout the years as most small school programs will as he now takes a strike to even the count at one and one. When you have less players in the school to choose from, it really becomes more hit or miss as to the strength of your program. Change up is low and away for a two and one, but when you get players like Ligori as a senior and Michelli and Sheldon, and then you bring in young talent, younger talent, like Colasanti, Kelly, and Dunn over at third base, that really creates a nice core and something you can work with and build on. You're right, Steve. I mean, 14 and 6, no slouch there. Yes, uh, the ball just off the plate there, so it moves to a 3 and 2 count for the opposing pitcher. Yeah, 14 and 6 is a good record with a mix of talent from youth and from experience here on this team. Absolutely. Pitch inside and off the plate, so Flynn works out the walk and they have a base runner for the second straight inning. McGorry's gonna have to compose himself. Can't let himself go like he did in the first inning and get people on base. The tall slender frame of the pitcher on first base gives us a, a notion that he might be looking to go. Not sure if you want your pitcher getting too crazy on the base paths as Patrick Gleason, the first baseman, takes strike one. He did not look to have any thought of stolen base in his head though, did Flynn at first base, so looks like they'll play this one straight up. Low over the middle of the plate, ball one, one and one to Gleason. Pitch catches the outside corner, one and two to Gleason. McGorry's kind of developing a little bit of a pattern here. Two or three pitches low and then one right in the strike zone. So if I was Valhalla, I'd start picking up on that. And the off-speed pitch is low and outside for ball two. Evens the count once again at two and two. Yeah, you definitely want to try and mix your pitches up and try not to fall into a pattern. We'll see if they picked up on that and if they'll try and take advantage of it. Low outside corner for the second K of the day. This one is a backwards one as Gleason goes down looking. Two outs for Rynek. And I'm pretty sure that was the third pitch that I was talking about too where it goes right in the strike zone. Good job there by Ligori. So Connor Ligori working from the stretch as he has Flynn on first base still. Hasn't thrown over and now a ground ball to Colasante. Fields it himself, steps on the bag and that will do it here in the top of the second inning. Score remains 0-0. Zero, zero. We'll be back in just a moment on LMC Varsity Sports. 
Flynn back on the mound and delivers the first pitch to Liguori. So we saw a pitcher on pitcher matchup in the top of the second. Now to lead off the bottom of the second is Connor Liguori. He fouls one straight back. It looked like an inside fastball. Second pitch off the plate for ball one. Liguori had a pretty good second inning, so uh, Flynn's going to want to respond with one of his own. Definitely wants to keep that pitch count down. Pitch catches the outside corner that time. It's now one and two. Flynn steps back to the rubber. The wind up and the pitch. Liguori swings and misses at that one. First strikeout for Flynn. One down for Valhalla. First pitch in in the second here, and already I'm noticing that Flynn is, is quite an enigma with his pitches. He just doesn't have a pattern, doesn't have a set rotation with his pitches, and it's a positive for him. Seems to change his arm slot a little bit too as Evan Dunn takes strike one, the third baseman, number 28. And another strike on the outside part of the plate, 0-2 oh to Dunn. Dunn grounds one towards second base. The first baseman fields it. Flynn does a good job getting over there in time to play that one like a first baseman. And the throw from Gleason to Flynn for the second out of the inning. Valhalla is doing everything right here on defense. It's got to translate this into some offense. And likewise, Ryan X going to have to wake up here and try to get on base and work the count. Now up is the strong hitting second baseman Michael Colasante and he takes a curveball for strike one. First pitch strikes also a key for any batter, any pitcher. In high school baseball when you get a first pitch strike the batting average goes down well below 200 so you want to try and avoid the first pitch strike as Colasante grounds one to Gleason, Flynn there to cover. And once again, the 3-1 put out. This time ends the inning. So the end of two, still no score here at Rynak High School. We'll be back in just a moment. So Liguori remains in. Pitch count still relatively low as he now faces the number eight hitter, Joe Pecora, the left fielder. Stands in the left hand batter's box. Here in the top of the third inning and the first pitch from the windup. Line drive down the left field line. And Birmingham chases that one off. Foul ball for strike one. Game is moving at a pretty solid pace here, Nick, as there hasn't been too much action on the base paths, and the pitching has been solid. You're right, Steve. I mean, in our pregame, we, I did predict a high-scoring game, given the fact that these pitchers, yeah, they are d very, very, very good, but, you know, they can give up some, uh, some hits here and there, but uh, so far, nothing. That pitch high and off the plate for ball one. Pecora finds some life with a one and two count. See if he can make something happen here against the right-hander, Liguori. Still plenty of baseball left to play though, so we hope that this game can burst into life. A very nice day here at Rynek. Another foul ball down the left field line and out of play remains one and two. It has become overcast as we have a huge storm front coming in which could wash out tomorrow's action which will be problematic as 
Pecora fouls off yet another one. Liguori will have to go for the sixth pitch of an at bat of this first at bat of the third inning, giving Pecora the first quality at bat of the game for Valhalla. Six pitches or more. And he works a ball there. Two and two count to the left fielder. Hard shot right at the shortstop. Brian Scott throws it over to Michelli for out number one. No team is giving the other an inch here. This is what we like to see, good defense being played by both teams. Definitely very good defense. It's always nice to see at the high school level sharp gloves and good throws. It's got to make Liguori feel confident as he steps to the rubber once again. The pitch low for ball one as Justin Renato, the second baseman, takes a ball. The wind up and the pitch, fly ball. Backs the right fielder, Matt Galstian. Backs him up a little bit and he settles under that for the second out of the inning. That's where Ligori's gonna have to be careful. He throws it right in there, perfect for the Valhalla hitters and then they're gonna wind and crack that. So he's gonna have to be careful. He's lucky that that one didn't go past the right fielder. We're back at the top of the order and Gavin Estrella is up to bat. He got a single in the first inning. Takes ball one. There, the breaking ball is off the plate for ball two. So a 2-0 two and o count to Estrella for the second time in a row. We'll see if he can put this one in play. Takes up for ball three, so it's 3-0. Three and o. And we should expect the strike over the middle from Ligori, as he does not want to put this runner on base with two outs. Strike on the lower half of the plate, three and one to the shortstop. Estrella with the ground ball to Colasante. He fields it clean, the sidearm throw. Gets him by a step to end the top of the third inning. So the score remains 0-0. A pitcher's duel here at Rynak High School will be back in just a moment here on LMC Varsity Sports. So we are here for the bottom of the third inning. At the plate is the right fielder, Matt Galstian, who had that put out in the top of the third inning. He takes a ball off the plate for ball one. Sharp grounder up the middle. Oh, and the shortstop steps on the ball. For you Trading Places fans out there. Didn't exactly sell the line perfectly, but he did step on the ball. So that is an error on the shortstop, E6. <laughs> puts Galstian on base for the first base runner here in the bottom of the third inning. Ooh, he almost got caught leaning the wrong way as Flynn throws over for the pickoff attempt. No one wants an error, but that's an error you'd probably want to take instead of the ball going past you, so I think he can't really complain. He ranged over well, got his glove on it, kept it in front of him as Birmingham takes strike one. But unfortunately, as the ball kicked in front of him, he shuffled his feet over and ended up stepping right on it instead of being able to feel it. He's lucky he didn't spike his own hand in that situation. Looks like Galsian's taking a healthy lead. And the bunt is in play. Oh, and it does finally roll foul. Birmingham had a single, but the spin on the bunted ball takes it into foul territory and the catcher touches it up for a foul ball. So it'll be 0-2 to Birmingham. 
It looked for a moment like Peleus was going to play that ball, but the rotation twisted that ball into foul territory just in time. We would have had first and second and no outs. The pitch and another bunt. Great job getting the ball in play and no one was there to field and cover first base as the first baseman Gleason fields the ball and Flynn was not there to cover and the second baseman was covering on the stolen base attempt because the batter was a righty. Oh, a great series of events there. Works out for an infield hit. Miscommunication there by Gleason and Flynn. They gotta tighten the screws here and recompose themselves. They don't wanna get Reinek on and score. So first and second and Colin Kelly, the lefty batter is up and he puts the bunt on and it rolls foul. Oh, it looked like a great bunt attempt there as the third baseman was playing deep and going to cover the bag. That would have been on the catcher, Peleus, to try and field that and throw it down to first in time or get the lead runner at third. No! I find Flynn here. I try to work my count a little bit, throw a little bit of balls, maybe some high strikes, low strikes. Try and mess with the with the batter's timing a little bit. I like that idea, Nick. We'll see what happens here as Flynn now working from the stretch. Looks at the runner at second base. Oh, and he's got him in a rundown. Oh, and they might have thrown too late, but they do get the call as the throw beats the runner. It looks like Galcian was able to slide under the tag, but the call is out on the play, so one away, and unfortunately, Birmingham unable to advance on the play. So a very fortunate series of events gets Valhalla their first out of the inning. Wiped out on the base paths is Galstian, picked off. Second base, and it goes down as a caught stealing as he's out at third base. That's some great defense by Estrella. Now Flynn tries to keep Birmingham honest at first. The throw over is late. The pitch. Kelly takes outside, one and one. Kelly rolled over his first at bat to first base, Gleason took that one himself. <laughs> Kelly has had a great season here at the plate for Reineck. Solid athlete as Birmingham is going. Oh, and he is out at second base. Spikes were high there as well. I think he was trying to avoid the tag and a nice display of sportsmanship as he goes and Pats Renato on the shoulder to let him know that there was no malice intended there. And now both runners nailed on the base paths. So the bases are empty for Colin Kelly with a one and one count. High and outside, ball two, two and one. If I'm Flynn here, this is where you tinker with your, your pitches here, because now you can throw whatever you want with the base being cleared and your team pulling their weight, you're pulling yours. This is exactly where you want to be if you're Flynn. Great point, Nick. We'll see if he tries to mix it up here with the two and one count. Fastball, line drive, fielded by the shortstop, and Kelly is safe at first, beating the throw for the infield single. The ball goes into the batting cage netting and out of play. So Kelly will advance one base on the errant throw. So that will go down as an infield single to the shortstop. Throwing error on the shortstop gives him second base. That'll bring up the shortstop, Brian Scott, who grounded out to shortstop in the first inning. <laughs> Kelly with a modest lead off of second. Scott takes high and inside for ball one. <laughs> Flynn.
Flynn takes a little too much time and Scott calls time at home plate. Batter always wants to work on his own pace and not let the pitcher dictate too much of the tempo, take him out of his comfort zone. And the pitch, line shot, mishandled by Gleason, and Kelly is coming around and will score the first run of the game on the line drive single by Scott. RBI for the shortstop, and Kelly scores to give Reineck the one nothing lead. Number six, good effort, buddy, next time. Rocket shot by the shortstop, number 24, Brian Scott. At this point now for Valhalla, though it's one nothing. at this point it's damage limitation here because this Reineck team is now playing with amazing confidence now, and they know that they can get on base now. They've had several base runners, only their second hit of the game, the second hit of this inning, but they are able to make it work as they now have the first run, one nothing, as Jack Sheldon is at the plate. See how Flynn responds. Ground ball by Sheldon straight to the second baseman. He goes over to the shortstop. He goes over to the second baseman. Renato for the out. And that will do it here in the top of the third, bottom of the third inning. So to the fourth inning we go. Ryneck now has the one nothing lead. Ligori with the first pitch strike. To Sasso, the number two hitter and center fielder. Sasso grounded out to the first baseman. In the top of the first inning. Ligori with another strike over the heart of the plate for a one and two count. Being up 1-0 here, lets Ligori set the tone for this inning. And he's going to want to take advantage of that. Beautiful strike on the outside corner. Third strikeout on the day. Second one looking for Ligori. And that will bring up Brian Goodman, the third baseman. Low and away, ball one. Yes, that's a great point, Nick. Now with a one nothing lead, Ligori can really settle in and sort of dominate what he wants to do. Line drive, looks like it will fall in fair down the line. Galstian. Gets it in quickly to Colasante. And Goodman with a beautiful line drive double. That's what you like to see from Valhalla. That's what you like to see. You need more of that though if they're going to come back from this 1 0 deficit. So the third baseman with the line shot double with one out puts a runner in scoring position as the catcher, Greg Peleus, comes to bat. He grounded out to Colasanti to end the first inning. Oh, sorry, he lined out to Colasanti on the double play that ended the first inning. And they will use a pinch runner here to get some speed on the base pass as they sense how important it is here in the top of the fourth inning of a seven inning game and a pitcher's duel as we discussed. They need to try and get this run home with only one out. That runner at second becomes very important. Swing and a miss by Peleus. Strike one. Ligori now, of course, pitching from the stretch. And you can see Brian Scott and Colasanti giving him plenty of attention there at second base. Pitches inside, one and one, and the Valhalla bench 
remains very energetic and loud. No, they're in for the long haul here, Steve. And they, they can sense that this game is close. one nothing. Though they are down, they feel like they can still take it to this Rhinac team. Pitch by Liguori is high, and Peleus offers edit, fouling it straight back. So it's a one and two count. A strikeout here would be huge for Liguori. Connor steps off the rubber to keep that runner honest at second. And the pitch, line shot down the left field line. Ranging back is Birmingham and he does a great job to track that one down and get the runner back to second. No tag up on the play, so while it wasn't a strikeout, the runner does not advance on the line drive to left field. Two away and the right fielder Robert Carbone now comes to the plate. Oh, I'm sorry, that was Carbone. Now the pitcher, Cameron Flynn, to the plate. Line drive right at the right fielder and a good job by Galstian to come up with that catch and end the threat. That's a missed opportunity there by Valhalla. They're gonna have to get that one back. So we'll be back with the bottom of the fourth inning here on LMC. First pitch of the bottom of the fourth inning is a hard shot to the third baseman. The throw over to first in time. And Michelli is out. Valhalla needs an error clean inning here in order to keep up the pace. Now at the plate is Liguori. First pitch in there for a strike. Strike one to the pitcher. Ground ball bounces over Flynn's glove. But Ronaldo does a good job backing him up and throwing him out at first base. So Liguori goes down, 4-3 in the book. And speaking of the book, I'm not sure exactly where I messed up, Nick, but I did mess up something in the top half of the inning there. We'll try and figure it out later in the game, but either they bat it out of order or I'm missing something here. But anyway, moving on, Flynn with the pitch. And Evan Dunn takes a strike, strike one. Very honest of you, uh, admitting on air that uh, we were a little out of order. Hey, look, I'm sure someone at home is gonna be watching this game and thinking that was not Carbone that is up at plate. He was the guy who lined out. And so uh, transparency is always better. Done with a ball off the end of his bat, and he is safe on the play. Mm. The field um Dale Layton took a moment to think about it and decide whether he had beaten the throw out, and he decided, I believe correctly, it did look like Dunn's foot did get down just before Gleason was able to scoop that ball up. So an infield hit for Dunn as he takes a nice hack at the ball. Yeah, that was hits it call. off the end of his bat. That was the proper call. They shouldn't complain. Colasanti now lines one foul for a strike one. Two outs here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Ryan Neck clinging to a one nothing lead, looking to see if they can extend that a little bit. Colasanti takes a ball off the plate outside, one and one. 
to the junior. Dunn looks to take an even bigger lead and Flynn senses it with eyes in the back of his head. Throws over to first base to keep him honest. Dunn has a lot of speed. We'll see if he tries to put that to use. Flynn's got to keep on doing the little things right here. See if it pays off for him. Pitch on the outside corner. Strike two to Colasanti. Looked like Dunn was inching further and further off the bag, thinking maybe he would be going on that play, but he holds Pat. <laughs> Outside, ball two, two and two to Colasante. Long fly ball, but right in solid position is the center fielder, Brad Sasso. And that will end it here in the bottom of the fourth. We head to the fifth inning on LMC Varsity Sports. With Nick Gutierrez, I'm Steven Astis. We are in the top of the fifth inning. And Patrick Gleason, the first baseman, is up to bat. Takes the ball, 2-0 for Gleason. He struck out looking in the second inning in his first at bat, 0-1 on the day. Pitch finds the plate, 2-1. Foul ball coming right at us, into the trees. Evens the count at two and two. Yeah, that almost hit us here. Uh, could have been dangerous, bounce very, about, very dangerous. Bounce about 10 feet behind our head. Gleason with the high fly ball. The right fielder, Galstian, settles under it. His second put out of the day. But how is going to have to find a way to get runners on base and to advance those runners as they're taking cuts here, good cuts, but they're pop-ups. They got to be harder, better, or if not, be more inquisitive with uh, their cut selection here, Steve. So Gleason goes down on the fly ball out. Now up is Joe Pecora. He takes a ball, the left fielder. Swing and a miss. Big cut. Big strike for Pecora. Ligori from the windup does not find the zone, and it's two and one for Pecora. Ground ball off the end of the bat. Michelli gets over to field it. Oh, Colasanti with a nice bare hand grab and throw over to first. But Pecora dies for first base and is safe on the infield hit. So that is the second ball hit off the end of the bat. And this long grass eats it up and the fielder cannot get to it and make the play in time. Yeah, to your point, Steve, I mean, it's a very slow offensive game so far. It's been a pitcher's game all the way through and through, but uh, both offenses, like though it's one nothing, barely have gotten anything going here. Yes, and they've been able to limit any damage. <laughs> Only Colin Kelly came around to score on that single from Brian Scott. As Ligori checks the runner at first and keeps him honest. One away here in the top of the fifth inning, and Justin Ronaldo at the plate, he flew out. Oh, and they got him! Beautiful pickoff move by Ligori. Michelli is pumped up as he slaps the tag on Pecora's shoulder. Pecora in disbelief. Felt he got his hand in, 
before he felt the leather and the coach will be coming over to talk it over with the umpire. From our angle, Steve, I think he was safe. I don't think the umpire was in a good position to call that out. It definitely looked close. I think you might be right. We'll take a look at the replay. But it was a bang, bang play. And Michelli, to his credit, he sold it well. He got that tag down quick and celebrated before the ump even made the call. So Valhalla's head coach comes over to do his due diligence and talk to the umpire about the call. But they wipe that runner off the base paths and now Ligori with the pitch to Renato strike. You're right, he's definitely coming in there to say, hey, all right, you gave them one, now give us one later. Fly ball down the left field line, foul and out of play. Two strike count to Renato. So once again from the windup is Ligori. And the pitch high and outside, ball. Rynex starting to feel the tide leaning in their favor as Renato grounds out an easy play for Dunn as he throws across the diamond for the third out of the inning. Three up, three down in not exactly a conventional way, but nonetheless, he faces the minimum in the inning and we move to the bottom of the fifth inning here on LMC Varsity Sports. An exciting game here at Rynak High School as Tom, as Matt Galsian is at the plate. He had a ground ball booted by the shortstop or stepped on by the shortstop. Found Valhalla, I want a little bit more confidence out of my out of my team here on the defensive and offensive end as it looks like they're trying to play without making a mistake. And a strike to the batter, Galstian, as he tries to get something going and give his pitcher Ligori a little more breathing room here in the bottom of the fifth. Ground ball, he gets on top of that. Simple ground out to the second baseman, Justin Renato, for the first out of the inning. 4-3 in the book. And that will bring up the number nine hitter, Tom Birmingham, the left fielder. Birmingham calls time. Once again, not allowing Flynn to dictate the pace and to try and get comfortable again in the box. Oh, he offers at a bunt, trying to bunt his way on, and that is strike one to the left fielder. Low and outside, ball one. I think Flynn should continue taking his time. Despite the batter asking for time, he should still take it, compose himself, maybe even just trick the batter one or two times. Swing and a foul ball, straight back to the screen, one and two for Tom Birmingham. So he'll be fighting a one-two count here and see if he can get himself on base for the top of the order. Swing and a miss, and he goes down on strikes. So it'll be two outs as Colin Kelly comes up. He singled in his last at bat, one for two on the day, and the sole run of the game scored. Fun Flynn, I'm taking nothing less than a one, two, three inning here. You need a quick inning, you need a turnover quickly. Line drive will reach the right fielder. 
and Carbone able to tuck that one away for the third out of the inning on a first pitch line drive by Kelly and that will do it here for the fifth inning with Nick Gutierrez I'm Steven Astis for LMC Varsity Sports we'll be back in just a moment with the top of the sixth Ligori remains in he is dealing for this Ryanek roster as he sends a fly ball Kelly tracks that one down nicely and comes up with it on the run for the first out One pitch, one out here in the sixth inning is a great help to Ligori as he does not want to get his pitch count too high for this game and for the next game as the lower his pitches are, the sooner he can come back and pitch again. Sasso swings and misses at that first one. Second one Ooh. off the plate, one and one. It looked like he was gonna go for a bunt there, but held. Yep, he pulled it back at just the right time. Or just in time. And another pitch outside, two and one count now to Sasso. Struck out looking in his last at bat. 0 for two on the day as he grounded out to the first baseman in his first at bat. Now it's a three and one count and Ligori throws his hands up as if to say, where do you want it for it to be called a strike? A little bit of disbelief. Found Valhalla in this inning, it's either score or bust. Fouls that one straight back. So the count now three and two to the number two hitter. Good crowd here today, a good solid student section. Traveling fans too, they're, they're also showing their support, good, good for them. Batter calls time. Ligori from the windup. And the pitch. Line drive into left center field. And it falls in for a single for Sasso, his first hit of the day. That'll, that'll bring up Brian Goodman, the number three hitter who had a double in the fourth inning. If he can replicate that, we may have a tie game. Ryan X outfielders, they really play the field well. You know, they, they look like they're far apart, but they also have great communication, great awareness. You know, if I'm Valhalla, you need more hits like that, or you're going to need home runs in order to beat this team. First pitch to Goodman, line out to... Great job by Colasanti. That was a great catch by Colasanti. And if I'm Valhalla, you can't ask for anything more. You got a good connection there. You just made a great catch there. So the line out to Colasante for the second out of the inning. Keeps Sasso at first base. He was able to get back in time, and Colasante wisely ate the ball rather than try and make the throw and throw it away and give the runner the chance to advance a base. So two outs, and the catcher, Greg Peleus, up to bat. Sasso steals second on the diving slide. Gutsy, gutsy there by Sasso. And here I noticed that I had Brian Goodman getting that double, but I'm noticing that was the catcher, Peleus who got the double back in the fourth inning. So either Brian Goodman forgot to bat in the fourth inning or I'm missing a base runner. I'm not really sure how that's possible, but no matter, we move on. Two outs here with a runner on second base. Oh, 
Peleus works a one and one count. Tension increases here with a runner in scoring position and two outs for Valhalla. Maybe a little two out rally going on here, who knows? He spins and thinks about throwing to second as Brian Scott was there to try and pick him off. But he does not make the throw. The pitch fouled back into the seats, if there were seats. Souvenir for the fan. Right. Or the neighbors, as I believe that did reach a house back there. I see a couple of decks back over there but they can't see through the trees. You're missing a good game of baseball. Definitely, Nick. Great pitch there. And it is now a two strike count to Peleus. Peleus needs to get on here. Swing and a miss and he gets him on the low fastball. Another missed opportunity there for Valhalla. They'll be ruining these chances. They've had a few opportunities here in this game, but have not been able to convert any into runs. So that'll do it for the top of the sixth inning. We'll be back in just a moment here on LMC Varsity Sports. Now up to bat is Brian Scott, and he rips a ground ball to third base. Sharp shot is backhanded well by Brian Goodman and Scott goes down at first. That is 58 pitches for Flynn. So he is well within his range to finish this game and be ready for action if Valhalla is able to come back. Ooh, nice pitch there to Sheldon as he offers at the curveball in the dirt. To your point though, Steve, I mean, it is a big if because offensively they've got, they've got nothing. They've right. got no production, but defensively they're holding pretty well. Granted, they did give up a run, but we'll see what happens. Another pitch in the dirt, he does not offer, and so it is a one and one count. Sheldon swings and fouls it straight back for strike two. So just to clean up the scorebook matter uh, earlier, I seem to have misscored a base runner in the second inning and I was off for an inning or so. So apologies if I confused any of you out there. It's okay, I forgive you. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> Sheldon fouls another pitch off. Count remains one and two. Rynak has a one nothing lead, which feels like a lot more than that because as you pointed out, they just have not, Valhalla uh, has not been able to string together any hits and get anything going to pose a real threat. Sheldon takes ball two in the dirt. There is some action in the bullpen for Rynek. It is Evan Dunn warming up. Sheldon works the count full now, three and two. As they look to try and add to their slim lead here in the bottom of the sixth. Though Dunn is warming up in the bullpen, I don't know if Ligori should be taken out of this game as it's way too close. Granted, like you did say and I said also that this game feels much more than 1-0, but it's too close. And I don't think they can afford to take him out. Sheldon goes down looking at the curveball, so there are two outs now. And Anthony Michelli will be up.
Ground ball into the hole. The, sec the shortstop bobbles it momentarily, but is able to barehand it out of midair and throw Michelli out for the third out of the inning. So that will do it for the sixth inning. We head to the seventh. Ryan Eck up one nothing here on LMC Varsity Sports. Up to bat here in the top of the seventh is the right fielder Robert Carbone and he takes ball one. Foul ball, out of play. One and one count to number three. Carbone 0 for 2 on the day, struck out swinging in his first at bat. This is it here. It's now or nothing. And honestly, if I'm Valhalla, every hitter needs to just start swinging. Fouls another one off. Two strike count to Carbone. The energy starting to pick up with the fans here at Rhinac High School as they can sense victory within their grasp. Pitch inside for ball two, two and two count. Ground ball fielded by Ligori. He underhand tosses it to Michelli. And we have the first out of the seventh inning. Now coming to the plate, the pitcher, Cameron Flynn. He walked his first time up, 0-1 on the day. 0-4-1 on the day. Strike down the pipe to Flynn. Fouls it straight back, strike one, strike two. See so if we can get a quick strike here, get him out. Bring See him if he comes with an off speed pitch here, try and fool him and mix him up. And he does. Flynn able to hold up his bat at the last second. They check down to first base umpire and he says that he did not swing so it is a one and two count to the opposing pitcher swing and a ground ball fielded by Michelli throws it up over to Ligori for the second out of the inning and they are one out away from victory clean Ryan X defense has been playing this game pretty cleanly. You know, that's what you like to see if you're the Ryan X coach and heading into next week's game, you know, that's gonna be important. No errors on the day, as you point out. They have been solid and clean in the field. And now at the plate is the first baseman, Patrick Gleason, and he takes strike one. Lagori has been solid all day with the first pitch strikes, putting him in command of the at-bat. He takes no time. And pitches, oh, that one just missed the top side of the zone, Nick. I thought he painted it pretty well there, but ruled the ball. Oh, a line shot right to Colin Kelly. And that will do it here at Ryan Ag High School. They come away with the victory over Valhalla in a pitcher's duel, one nothing. It was a good game. What a solid sides. game from both sides. Great pitching, but the line drive single score by Brian Scott scoring Colin Kelly is the difference in the game. And Ryneck finishes it off with a one nothing victory. We'll be back in just a moment 
with the player interview and post-game reaction here on LMC Varsity Sports. I'm here with player of the game, Connor Ligori. Connor, a fantastic pitching performance by both teams, really. And your teammate, Brian Scott, comes up with the big hit to score Colin Kelly. How do you feel about this victory? Uh, I feel great. I mean, Brian came up clutch. I mean, it was the only run scored in the game, so it was important. Do you feel like once you had that run in your pocket that you were able to change your mentality on the mound, or were you just plowing ahead either way? Um, the menta I was confident the whole way through, but you know, when my guys can get some runs, it's, it makes it a lot easier. So this is your final season as a Rhinec Panther. How does it feel to come away with a postseason victory? Uh, pretty good. I mean, it's just one, and we're looking for more, so get back to it. You guys have Pleasantville on Monday. Uh, there's going to be a lot of rain coming through. Hopefully you guys will be able to get that game in on Monday. Are you going to be looking to get back out on the mound? You didn't throw too many pitches. How do you feel? Um, I mean, I probably could go Monday, but I don't think my coach would let me. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see how my arm feels and uh, take it from there. Back here on LMC TV Varsity Sports, I'm Nick Gutierrez. I'm here with Coach Carlucci. And Coach, 1-0 win. You know, it was a good game by uh, both sides, but especially, you know, your pitcher. Let's highlight Connor Ligori and what he does for you guys. How important is he going down the stretch in these playoffs? We, we are a totally different team when he's on the mound. He, he bails us out of, out of jams. He throws tons of strikes. He, uh, he battles every inning. He's, he's a great pitcher. Right, right. And what worked well for you guys going down the stretch here in these innings? Defense. Played great defense. We didn't make any errors today. We were clean, and Connor threw nothing but strikes. That usually leads to a win. There we go. There we go. And now looking forward to uh, Pleasantville on Monday. What can you expect out of your team uh, going into that game? Well, we'll probably have Evan Dunn on the mound. They're tough. They're 15-5. They have a really good ace who's not pitching today because they have a bye. So it's going to be a tough game, but we'll do our best. So that will do it here from Rhinac High School. A fantastic game. And as you pointed out, Nick, a pitcher's duel that made the game move very quickly. It did. I mean, both pitchers played very well, but especially Connor Ligori. You know, he really painted the box very well. And it was a game about mistakes there for uh, this whole game. Yes. I mean, it was no mistakes for Reinek and one mistake for Valhalla, and that cost them the game because they did. Uh, Reinek did score on that uh, that mistake that was made there by um, I believe it was the, the shortstop. shortstop. Yes. And uh, but no, it was a great game, and uh, that's all you can ask for. He even did a solid job getting in front of it, but unfortunately, when he stepped on the ball, that put Kelly on base, and then Brian Scott, the next batter, was able to get him home with that nice line drive hit and so they will move on and play Pleasantville the number two seed and Ligori is available to pitch I'm sure he might come in maybe to, to close but they will have more pitching depth on display for Ryan Eck as they move forward in the postseason so that will do it here uh, for Eric Lewis and Matt Sullivan and for our sports producer Rob Moretti this is Nick Gutierrez and Steven Astis for LMC Varsity Sports.